There's our snake picture. And the reason I picked this picture is you really can see the difference between the regular scales on this snake or his scoots. The scoots are long and thin and they're underneath and they're designed for him to be able to scoot along on his scoots. You like that? Do you still have a head to the snake skin? No, I've lost the head. What a bummer. Okay. Well, obviously this was a good sized snake. Right? And my dad had fun with this one because he was trying to scare everybody because it was right near the cow water trough. And when he showed me, I'm like, can I have it? <laughs> because you're so strange. Anyway, um, but I, I don't know if you can see it. You can really see the difference in the shape of the scales. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but we will try the elongated ones and the others. It gives you a feel for, um, that used to have the head on it too, and I'm really bummed that it came off because you could actually see the covering that went over the snake's eyes. And it, it's like the skin. There's no eyelids, and so it just, when it sheds, the covering goes off of the eyes too, which is really disturbing to me. It's a type of uh, torture to hold your eyelids open. I don't know if you know that. You, you don't need to know about torture, but anyway, it's a type of torture to hold your eyelids open. And I can't help thinking it's part of the curse that when the snake blew it and God said you're going to eat the dust of the ground, I bet you that's when he lost his eyelids because that would be like so incredibly obnoxious to never be able to shut your eyes. You know? Anyway, just, just my opinion. Okay. So let's look at snakes. Um, snakes use their scoots to scoot along on. They use an S movement to either get along the ground or to swim. And there's your movement. Okay, so snakes can move in these ways. That's a sidewinder, which is a type of uh, rattlesnake. Okay, so those are the different movements that they can accomplish. Um, they are carnivorous, so they eat rodents, insects, lizards, eggs, and other snakes. Is somebody trying to get in? Okay, good. Just making sure. Um, here, we'll just step out of frame so I know it here. And I'll just put him away while we're doing that. Okay. So I need to cut that out. Thank you. Um, okay. They are deaf because they don't have ears. Let's see if we can go back to his face here. Now, you can't really see that he doesn't have ears. Here you go. No ears. See it? No ears. We saw that ear on the lizard, remember? Don't see one there. Doesn't have eyelids. Notice, no eyelids. Okay. Have you guys ever heard of a legless lizard? I have students that like the legless lizards, and immediately my brain went to, wait a second, that's what a snake is, isn't it? <laughs> it's a legless lizard. <laughs> and then when I learned about this, I thought, no, that's not. They would name it a legless lizard if it had ears and it had eyelids and it just didn't have legs. That would be a legless lizard, right? So there really is a reason to call it a legless lizard. Anyway, uh, and see, now that you've learned that, you know that. They can't hear, but they do sense vibrations, and they have a very keen sense of smell. And so they have nostrils, and this is your pit. We're going to come back to the pit vipers. But remember, here in Florida, we have pit vipers. What does a snake see with his uh, pits? Right, he sees our are infrared. He sees your heat signature. Literally, it's like having little infrared glasses on and he can see what's there from its heat signature. It's a trip if you think about it. They have a very good sense of smell. They don't see very well, but they do have a very good sense of smell. And what heightens their sense of smell? What do they have that makes their sense of smell so much better? The Jacobson's organ. Very good. And the Jacobson's organ's back here, and they stick their tongue out, and they bring it back in, and then it goes to their Jacobson's organ, which is attached to their brain, and they actually are smelling the ground, as, or as well as tasting the ground. And they can use that to track a, uh, some prey that they want to get. Um, and so they can trace even the faintest uh, odors, is what it tells us. Um, Okay, we did that. So let's go to the next page. Let's see, on page 502. It tells us that snakes, we just said snakes are carnivorous. 
um, that's just showing you that they do stick out their tongue to taste the environment around them or smell the environment around them because it helps them with that. Some snakes are constrictors. I did not want to show you a snake killing something. I had to look very long and hard to find pictures I could show you, and they weren't gross because it was killing something, because it would bother me. So even if it didn't bother you, it would bother me. So this is a guy at a park showing them how a constrictor constricts, and he picks it up, and this is a little video actually on YouTube, but the, the snake rolls around his arm and constricts, and then he puts it down and it does it around his leg. That's what constrictors do. Okay, and most snakes I find will be constrictors. A garden, you know, a, a garter snake in your garden will actually constrict on whatever it eats. I heard a frog scream once in a palmetto bush, and I thought that's a frog screaming. And I and, and I went over and looked, and there was a garter snake that was constricting the. Frog. I bothered the snake until it let the frog loose, and I said, you got one last chance, and I left. I'm like, sorry, snake, I just couldn't stand by and watch you kill him, you know? I'm weird, just let it go. But anyway, so constrictors actually will uh, hug their prey to death. You could look at it that way. And then they open their mouth very largely, and they eat it. That is here in the Florida Everglades. That is a python. Pythons are a problem in Florida. It is an exotic invasive species, which means exotic, it doesn't belong here, and invasive, which means it has invaded our uh, ecosystem. They eat baby panthers and other things that they shouldn't eat. We do not have, they have no natural predators in the Everglades, and therefore they are a problem, a big problem. I did hear of one, though, that ate a gator, and the gator didn't die, and the gator ate his way back out and killed the snake, and I thought, go gator, you know? So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So that's a python. Your book also mentioned an anaconda. I'm going to tell you my anaconda story really, really quickly. My grandfather, Alexander Dombrowski, my original last name was Dombrowski. My, my name when I went to school was Deborah Catherine Dombrowski. Talk about a name. Anyway. Um, my grandfather, Alexander Dombrowski, uh, worked in the Panama Canal Zone. He was down there when they were digging the canal. And my grandmother met him down there. And so they married while they were down there. And they used to have a little house in the jungle because they were part of the American people that were actually digging the canal and running the canal once it was dug. And my grandmother used to tell a story. They're in their Model T and they're driving home from town to their little house. And, you know, there's jungle on either side of the dirt road that they're using. And she said there was a log across the road so grandpa got out to move the log so they could go home and she said he got out and he walked a couple feet and then he turned around and he came back and he sat back down in the car and she goes what's wrong and he goes it's moving <laughs> and she was like oh and it was an anaconda, and it was so big that you couldn't see either side of the snake. It looked like a log across the road, and he literally just sat there and waited till it finished passing, and then they went home. I always thought that story was so cool. So anyway, anaconda can get really, really large. It is the largest snake, I think, on the planet. They, they can get really big. And then it mentioned that the, the ball python are fairly small. They're only supposed to get about five feet long, and therefore they sell them as pets to people. My roommate in college had one and we lived in a trailer and she managed to lose it in the trailer and we don't know what happened to it. But anyway, um, and then that's a boa constrictor and boa constrictors only get eight to 10 feet long. So people have those as pets also. You know, I think that's what Jan had was a boa. I think it was a boa, not a python. I think it was a boa. Anyway, um, and then it said that snakes can unhinge their mouth to eat their prey. And once again, I had to find you a picture that didn't offend me. So this one's eating an egg. I thought I could handle that, okay? And, but you can see there that it has to unhinge its mouth to be able to get it around that egg, don't you? Right? And so they just swallow things whole. They don't chew things at all. Um, and then uh, we learned that the 
the book calls them poisonous snakes. We're not going to call them that because I've been corrected by some students on that before. We no longer say snakes are poisonous nor are lizards poisonous. They are venomous because poison is a chemical that you take and it makes you sick. Okay, so they're venomous. All right, just so you have it correct when you go to college, I don't want you to say it wrong and your teacher go, you're one of those stupid Christians or something like that, you know. So we have to, oh, trust me. <laughs> so we have to definitely try to represent Jesus the best we can. So we want to try to be accurate. They're venomous snakes, okay? There's two basic types of venomous snakes. There's neurotoxin snakes and there's hemotoxin snakes. Now, neuro, when you hear neuro, you should think nerves. It sounds like nerves, doesn't it? If you're a, going to a neurologist or somebody that studies nerves. Hemo, remember I said hemoglobin, heme meant blood, so hemoglobin was the blood protein. Well, here we have a hemotoxin. What is that? It attacks your blood, doesn't it? So neurotoxins it attacks your nervous system and therefore you get blindness, paralysis, and suffocation. Hemotoxins, it attacks your blood vessels and things like that. Now, the neurotoxins are faster acting, so they'll paralyze you faster, but the hemotoxins are deadlier than the other. And so we have two basic types of snakes here. You have short fang snakes, which are also called fixed fang snakes, and then you have the four fang snakes, with the, which are the ones that flip out. And so here are your, they're fixed fangs. You see they're small because he can shut his mouth on them. This is actually what the, uh, the, the python's mouth looks like when he opens his mouth. These are fixed fangs. Whereas where a rattlesnake, when he opens his mouth, they fly forward and, or a moccasin or a cotton mouth or a pygmy rattler, they come forward and then they hit you this, uh, this membrane is pushed up and that pumps the venom out of the venom gland that's in his head into whoever he bit. And this is a fixed fang snake. Once again, he can shut his mouth and it doesn't have to move. These hinged ones are your pit vipers, okay, that we think of as most of what we have around here. Um, your coral snake is a fixed fang snake. Now, the coral snake, let me get this right. Yeah, so the second type of coral snake has long, okay. I know that, I'm pretty sure that the coral snake, I can't remember which one the coral snake is. Is he a neurotoxin snake or a hemotoxin? I think the coral snake's a neurotoxin snake. It's faster acting, but the hemotoxin's more deadly, so that's be like your pit vipers, okay? We do have coral snakes here. We have all the lovely snakes here, don't we? Okay. Um, and the coral snakes have the short fangs, so he's got to really bite on you and kind of gnaw on you. Yeah. And so if you have on boots or, you know, shoes and heavy pants, you should be okay. I mean, unless you go, here, bite me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it should, you're bigger than he is, too. Coral snakes are about that long if you got a really big one. And so, and, and so they really got to get through to your skin. Although if they do get through to you, they're deadly. And see, that's your rear fang snake. And so if he can get that in you and, and chew on you, they're very, very deadly. Um, sea snakes are very deadly. And I was a little disturbed when I found this picture and then it said, no, they don't live here. This was off the coast of Australia. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you know. So I, I don't know that we have any sea snakes here, although my husband assures me there are a few in the Bahamas. Um, most of them, though, if you do the reading, they're very deadly. But if you do the reading, they don't like people. They don't want to be around you. If you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone type of thing. It's when they're on the, the uh, shore and they've gotten left on the shore, you don't want to go touch them because then they're angry anyway and they'll turn around and bite you. So don't mess with them because they can't move. They don't have scoots like a regular snake. They have a fin. So they're stuck when they're on shore. They can't move around. That's what I've been told. So, okay. Coral snake. What you want to remember is um, red on yellow kills the fellow. Forget the rest of the poem. Just remember that part. Red on yellow kills the fellow. So what do we need to know? If the red is hitting the yellow, it's deadly. It's a coral snake. If the red is not hitting the yellow, it is not deadly. But forget that part. Just remember, red on yellow kills the fellow. Then you'll know which one to, that you need to stay away from. Because this is a scarlet king snake, and they're actually a good snake, and you don't want to kill them because they actually eat the dangerous snakes. So that's our friend. We want to keep him around, okay? So, so you look at that. Is that dangerous or not? Yes. 
Good, because red on yellow, that's dangerous. You want to stay away from him. What about this one? No. no, because the red's not hitting the yellow. Very good. Okay, learn something practical today. Talked about the black neck cobra that can actually spit its venom so that it blinds its uh, prey. That makes me think of the original Jurassic Park movie where they had the one, you know, and it spit the venom in the guy's eyes. I think that's where they got the idea honestly, because there is a living reptile that actually does that. And then here are your four fanged snakes, and the venom comes out there when the uh, membrane is pushed back. That is like the, the pit vipers that we just talked about. This is a cotton mouth moccasin. This is a moccasin to get you some feel. Stay away from these. They're deadly. They're everywhere. There's water in Florida. They're everywhere. Okay. Oh, and don't think you're safe if you're in the water with it. It can bite you there. Okay. And they do not have to be coiled to strike. Be very clear on this. Some people think, oh, it's not coiled, I'm safe. Wrong. You are not safe. Move in the opposite direction or grab a big shovel or a shotgun usually works well. Okay? Um, this is a copperhead moccasin. Once again, pit vipers. Got the characteristic shape to the head. The head is more triangularly shaped than straight shaped because of the venom glands back there. So this shows you the copperhead has that shape, whereas a water snake, you don't have that triangular shape to the head. Okay? If in doubt, run. <laughs> okay? Don't hang around. All right? That is your diamondback rattlesnake, eastern diamondback. It didn't list it in the book. It said the western. We live with the eastern ones here, so this is the one you need to be able to identify. If you are walking through the brush and you hear go the other way, but before you do, stop. Locate where it is because they blend in the grass very nicely. So stop, locate where it is, and then head in the opposite direction. A rattlesnake will not chase you. Rattlesnakes are telling you, I'm over here, go away because I don't want to mess with you. That's why he's doing that. <laughs> Moccasin, they'll chase you. They're nasty. I've seen moccasin chase people and animals. They are nasty. I just don't like them at all. Rattlesnake, I kill them because they could kill me or my kids or my horse or my dogs, but I have respect for a rattlesnake because I've seen rattlesnakes. My husband stepped off the four-wheeler. I'm sitting on the four-wheeler. My husband steps off the four-wheeler this way. The rattlesnake comes out from under the four-wheeler this way. Now, that was God protecting my husband, but the point is rattlesnakes aren't looking for trouble. Rattlesnakes want to be left alone, not a moccasin. So beware of these. And then this is, a lot of these are in this area. This is a pygmy rattler. That's giving you scale. They're very small. This is what they look like. When they're doing their rattle, you can't hear squat because they're too little, okay? And they'll go. And you're looking at them like, what are you trying to do, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I'm going to tell you right now, if they strike you, they are venomous. They will make your dog very sick. I've had so many of my dogs bitten by these things. They will make you very sick. They probably won't kill you, but they will make you sick, and they'll make your dog very sick. And if it's a small dog, you can kill them. So you got to be careful. Notice, once again, the shape to the head. These are all pit vipers. They all have that where they can hunt at night because they can see the heat signature. You can't tell I'm a native Floridian. See, I know all of these <laughs> too well. Okay, I think I fought most of them with machetes before, so, or shovels, you know. No, I'm serious. We lived in Loxahatchee 30 years ago. Think about what it looked like. And I was clearing my own yard by hand. So yeah, I found copperheads, I found moccasins, I, ugh, so. And I personally think they're uh, within kind because I think I've seen snakes that were cross between a moccasin and a rattlesnake because I could see the characteristic diamonds down the back, but it had that yucky gray color of a moccasin. It was not a, a diamond back. So I think I've seen a hybrid personally. And then I had my husband come and kill it. <laughs> anyway. This is just to show you that they can eat something much bigger than they are because they can unhinge their jaws and swallow much bigger things. Once again, I didn't want to show you the gory details, so I just showed you a really fat snake. Um, all right, then we get to more fun. Good, we're done with snakes, yay! Okay, we get to turtles, which are in testudinis. And the turtles actually, I brought you a turtle shell because, um, and, and this is actually a box turtle shell. So this is, these used to be everywhere in Florida, okay? Box turtles were everywhere. When I was a kid, you would find them walking to school. They were everywhere. And a box turtle, this is his upper shell, which is called the carapace. I want you to notice you can see his backbone in there. Can everybody see that? You can see his backbone. Okay. So a, a turtle can't remove his shell because that's the back of his body. 
His spine is in there and all. I want you to understand that. This is a box turtle shell, so he would actually close this part up and you couldn't see him. That's the name box turtle. Okay, not all turtles can do that. I want to be very clear. But the box turtle was able to open this and stick his little head out and cruise along or shut that up. And, and that's, that's the name box turtle. Okay, um, but there you go. There's a box turtle closing his little shell and there's his little face. And don't be fooled, they will bite you if you scare them. I've had that happen too. This is a gopher turtle. Gopher turtles, gopher tortoise, because remember, turtle uh, makes you think it's in the water a lot. Tortoise makes you think it's on land. Gopher tortoise is mostly on land. Notice he cannot pull his head completely in. If he pulls his head in, that's as far as he can get. Okay, so I want to be very clear. And, and that really leaves them in danger uh, to dogs and other predators because they, they really can't defend themselves very well. Gopher turtles are very important to Florida. They are a uh, keystone species which means other species depend on them to survive because they dig their burrow in the ground and then um, the rattlesnakes will get in there with them and everything else will because when fires come through Florida and then the animals can live in the burrow, uh, the gopher turtle hole until the fire goes through and then they all come back out. Um, my, actually the daughter that's here, my second daughter, when she was about seven years old, she was my honorary boy because you know I had three girls. And Brisa did everything that she shouldn't have done, like broke her body over and over and stuff like that. But she comes in one day, and she comes in the house, and I look at her, and something's wrong. And I look at her, and she's covered in ticks. I mean hundreds of ticks. And I looked at her, and I go, what did you do? Well, I just got down in the turtle hole. <laughs> and I remember freaking out. At first I'm thinking, oh, thank you, God, there wasn't a rattlesnake in that hole, because she went down in that hole and just was covered in ticks. And immediately I did the thing any mother would do. I called my mother and said, how do I get the ticks off my kid? <laughs> you know? Like, ah! So don't get in the gopher turtle hole. Not a good idea. Okay. Uh, and then there are sea turtles, and the book tells us about sea turtles. Here in Florida, we have five sea turtles that still live in Florida. We have the green turtle. We have the Kemp's Ridley. We have the Hawksbill turtle. We have the leatherback turtle, and we have the loggerhead turtle. So those are the sea turtles that actually still live in Florida. That's helped you to identify them. Notice size-wise, your Kemp's Ridley is the most endangered turtle as far as I know, and it's much smaller than these others. The leatherback is the one that it pointed out can get up to 1,500 pounds. And interestingly, his back, his spine is not in the back of his shell. That's the name Leatherback. Okay, he's, he's a little different, but they get really large. They're still around. I've seen these on the boat uh, swimming. So anyway, so that gives you basic scale for sizes. Um, we'll just run through those very quickly. That gives you scale once again for the Leatherback on the beach when it's laying its eggs. So they get big. And that's the loggerhead. Uh, oh, and off of the Space Coast, they actually found a hybrid between a green turtle, turtle and a loggerhead, showing they are originally the same created kind, that they can interbreed like that, which is really strange. Oh, something they didn't know when I was your age, but they know now, and some of you are going to go, I knew that, but some of you may not, so I'm going to tell you because I'm excited about it, <laughs> is that reptile eggs, depending on if they're hot or cool, will be male or female. They didn't know that when I was your age. So now they know that. And I had somebody tell me that's true of chickens too. That depending on the temperature, and I can't remember if it's the hotter is the male and the light, uh, cooler is the female, uh, but the point is that like in the part of the clutch where they're located, clutch being the nest, um, the hotter part will actually be all one sex and the cooler part will be another sex because the sex actually determines which way it's going to go as far as its uh, sex. Yes? Something interesting I noticed about the picture. Are those barnacles? Those are definitely barnacles. Turtles have a real problem with that. And turtles also have a real problem when they live in areas close to where people are and there's a lot of chemicals. They develop a lot of tumors. And I've been told that if you go right here to the... Uh, the marine sanctuary thing that they've got turtles they're trying to rehab from the tumors. I'm sorry? Limbo? Yes, 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 yes. I've heard that. And then if you go online, <clears throat> excuse me, in Hawaii, there's a lot of problems with the turtles getting tumors from the chemicals that we're putting in the water. And we need to pay attention because when the animals start, start showing these diseases, we are going to have these diseases too. We, you know, don't just think that it's just the animals. <clears throat> Excuse me, if it affects the animals that way, it's going to affect us that way, right? 
And I'm sorry for the turtles, but we need to pay attention and see what it is that's causing this. Try to help the turtles, but we need to get away from it too. It's very, very important. Anyway, okay. Um, and then your book mentioned the land turtle, uh, excuse me, the giant tortoise. And I picked that picture because you could see it with the kids to get an idea of the size of the land tortoise. When I was a kid, they used to have these at the zoo and we all wanted to go ride them, you know, but that wouldn't have been nice. And I just showed you that picture because I think it's so cute because it's got all the little baby land tortoises and I said, oh, aren't they cute? It, you know, they're just, <sighs> anyway. Okay, now we get to the crocodilians. We're gonna do these if we can real quickly. Crocodilians would be your alligators and your crocodiles, okay? The other is the guriel. And that's from India. The caiman actually are in South America. A lot of people like to make those pets and turn them loose here, so it's considered an invasive species, but that's your gharial, your American alligator we have here. And we have basically the saltwater crocodile, which is here listed as the Cuban crocodile. Those all live here, not the gharial. He lives in the, uh, India. But these live here, and these have been turned loose here, I'm sad to say. We are the only place on planet Earth that have alligators and crocodiles both living in the same place. Aren't you happy? No. Anyway, um, it tells you how they can get their prey by laying in the water and acting like a log because they'll only leave the top half of their body. And then something unsuspecting might be on the, you know, getting a drink. Let's say you're a deer and you're getting a drink and this log's there, and then it gets you. And sad but true. And then what they do is they pull their prey into the water they drown it and then they leave it on the bottom for days and let it start to rot before they try to eat it. Now I'm telling you all that because if you ever get grabbed by an alligator or a crocodile, the point is they don't like anything that puts up a struggle. So what you want to do is poke it in the eye, punch it in the head, don't just give up because if you give it a hard time, it's gonna spit you out because it doesn't wanna fight for its food. So that's why I'm telling you and there are something like 230 people die from crocodile attacks every year, um, and only like 50 people die from shark attacks every year, and over half of those are here in Florida, I'm sorry to say, but the point is that these, these things do happen, and alligators have killed a few kids in Florida, I'm sad to say. Uh, so the point is that you need to know to fight, and you need to stay away from places where the alligators might be. Um, the alligators make a nest, you read about that, and the heat um, actually helps them to produce little gators um, that you could, from the rotting material in the nest. And mama gator guards her nest. So that means if you see an alligator nest, go someplace else. Okay, cause mama actually protects her babies. And once the babies come out, they start chirping and like eh, 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 eh. And mama goes in there and she digs them out. She puts them on her head and her body and carries them back to the water. And when daddy gator tries to eat them, she snarls at him and tells him back off, dude. And so mama gator actually protects the baby gators. Now, I wanna finish this with you. So we're gonna finish this next week, okay? Are you enjoying this at all? I like critters, I can have fun with them. So we'll finish the uh, gators next week and this chapter, okay? All right. All right, you guys, have a blessed week. Last week, next, last week is, next week is last week, I can talk. Next week is the last week.